The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good Friday morning. Good Friday morning to you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? Very good. Thank you. Good. Well, Basil, another morning, another market action day it seems like to the positive side where we are right now we're at session highs the dow up almost 400 points up 387 that's almost 1.5 percent in the green trading at 26,884 s&p's up a similar 1.5 excuse me 1.45 percent right now 42 points in the green for the s&p's trading 29.80 nasdaq leading the way up almost 1.7 131 points right now in the green trading at 8082 and you got the russells as well up 1.82 percent that's 27 points in the green for the russell trading at 1512 check out the s&p quite a run basil i was going over in the update we're about a, we're more now than 100 points from where we were on the futures as of wednesday night pretty remarkable less than 48 hours a lot of that having to do with the optimism around the u.s china trade talks to pull things up even just in the last half hour or so getting a tweet from president trump not sure if there's anything really behind it but nonetheless this is, a, I believe these times are off for some reason, European 9.49 a.m. this morning. Good things are happening at China trade talk meeting. Warmer feelings than in recent past. More like the old days. I'll be meeting with the vice premier today. All would like to see something significant happen. So a lot of rhetoric in there, whether that's based off anything happening. But nonetheless, the market's reacting 28.84 being the high and a pretty remarkable run over the last 48 hours as we come into the weekend. What are you checking out this morning, Basil, with everything happening? We got gold pulling back as well. We have the yield up at 1.72% on the 10-year. Um, there's lots of places, I guess, that we could start. So if you look at the dollar, which is down quite sharply now, this is something that I've been monitoring very closely for quite a while because uh, for subscribers to my opening call, we've been long the dollar from April of 2018. And what I would spoken to uh, Tom about just recently yes. is that in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for four higher peaks. And at that fourth highest peak, I alphabetize it A, peak B, peak C, peak that D. Peak that fourth D. highest peak is where other things can happen. Okay. So if you look at the dollar, 99.46 on the 1st of October, it pulled back just the way it's always pulled back before. It's never, it's never off the top. It's had a couple of big red candles, but it hasn't had the big red candle after it's making a test of the left side low. Okay. In the, in the daily chart right here, you can see I've got a little arch formation. At the same time, it was a peak D in the daily. It's a leg D, and there's no way that uh, this, by this afternoon we would go above 99.62. Sure. That was the high of, um, the, high of the 1st of October. So it's pretty certain that this is going to be a peak D in the daily. But most importantly, we're getting a leg D in the monthly. And you can see I've got a trend line. I like to keep things as simple as possible. We've got a trend line, this green line. Yes. If there was a break above it, that would be very important. But it, what I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, it's been repelled from this line in leg D. And that says to me, I've got, I've got to be a little careful here in the analysis of the dollar because perhaps the administration is getting now what it's been wanting for a while, and that is a weaker dollar. I'm not sure what quite is causing it. We don't usually know until a good few months go by. But it seems to me that this is the moment where the dollar could have, like it had back in May, one of its deeper declines. The monthly, though, is still very positive looking out. But on the shorter term, meaning short, maybe to intermediate term, this is going to be important. The fact that there are periods of throughout the year where maybe for four to six weeks, you'll get a move in the dollar and gold that are parallel, moving in the same direction, not necessarily the same percentage, but in the same uh, direction, 
this is one of those periods. You've got gold down $20 right now at 14.81, as you were talking about it. It's out of this rectangle formation that it informed as kind of a, a magnet price. It's away from that 1505 level. Okay. And now that yeah. 1465 is that H pattern that we'd be looking at. Sure. So when you get both, you get now the fear factor for international markets about financials, et cetera, which kind of lend, leans itself towards going into gold. That That's ameliorated. The dollar is pulling back. And the semiconductors, which is very important, has kind of broken out here uh, at 122.74. It's only it's less than a point away from an all-time high. I have to consider that even though I've been saying to subscribers, we have to see what happens by the end of the day today, the fact that you've got these three elements, as I said, gold pulling back, semiconductors rallying, and the dollar weak, tells me that there's a chance that there could be further gains to be made. I need to see the close today and how we open on Monday because it's saying to me, once you break this, I've got a pattern here that I call the falling axis. It's just a cone formation in the semiconductors from the 123.30 now of the 12th of September. Lower highs, much lower lows. Now it's making this U-turn, this cup formation. It's broken to the upside. I think it's important. I have to have great respect for the fact that if the semiconductors, which are in almost every industry, sure. are doing this well, I've got to respect that and say, hey, maybe this actually will have legs. We're going to see if this follows through. So we've been sideways. You were talking about it just a moment ago. One tweet, and you can do anything. But the fact is, if you're looking at the Dow, look at this uh, weekly chart. The weekly chart says you've basically been in a trading band between 27,500 and 24,500 for a long time. Um, big question is, do we break above it or do we continue this digestive phase? Yeah, and it'll be interesting. I imagine that uh, that tweet will not be the last tweet of the day, whether it'll be a, a good or a bad tweet. It would make me think that with um, meetings going on, the president likes to keep people updated for his rhetoric, and I imagine we'll get something more. And um, you know, to keep in mind, Basil, myself, just looking at it, there's every reason for President Trump to want to deal right now to to get some good news on his side. Politically, for absolutely yes. Um, with with you know impeachment hearings and ambassadors uh, going to be testifying. It's just a nonstop stream of news. It seems like with everything out there, to have this into the news cycle, of course, would be something he wants to happen. So I, I would imagine he has every incentive. And if if you think of this as the scales of justice, you know, you've got the left side and you've got the right side. If you're going to have impeachment hearings just going on and on and on, on the one hand, you have to have something going on with the, with the trade talks on the other to balance it out for news. But most importantly, if you think about it as um, something that probably the administration would like to keep going as long as possible, you don't want to wrap up the trade deal right now. You want to have little incremental bits of good sure. news, uh, and you want to spread that out as long as possible. And that's probably the reason why we're looking at the sideways trading ban, because I think the Chinese also need to play hardball. They've got their own um, populace that they have yeah. to uh, appease. Uh, the, so. the devil will be in the details, right, Basil? And that's what Absolutely. I mean. All we have right now is that we're meeting the vice premier, and guess what? All is well. Well, we'll find out, folks. Basil and I come right back. Bank markets in positive territory. Stay tuned, folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets rocking to positive territory. Dow now up 402. S&P is positive by 45. You got the NASDAQ positive by 138. And the Russell positive by 2% on the dot, up 29 points. Basil, I see you taking a look at the TLT up there, some yes. bonds. So this is very interesting because you've had an arch formation that went to 148.19 the tlt which is the 20-year treasury bond etf back on the 28th of august drops i would say plummet but when you look at the left side rally it dropped sure. went to 136.54 but then it only rallied to the 146.03 level on the 4th of october yep and now it's making another arch formation at the same time you can see the magd wasn't anywhere close as the MACD right here on the left side of the daily chart. Wasn't anywhere as close as it was at the highs in the 147, 148 area. So it crossed negative, and the stochastic briefly went above 80%. I like that 80% level. Above that is usually very good. But below at 57, it's showing weakness. And that's very interesting because what does it benefit? It's benefit the XLF. And the XLF right now is at 27.86. Yes, it's stuck in a range between the 28s and the 26s, but uh, this is nice to see it rally here. I, I personally, looking at the banks, I think it's important that the banks find some strength as proxies for areas in the market that have done their due diligence and everything, have met all the requirements that, are, that, that, that the Fed's demanded of them, and that I want to see them break loose from the negativity of the uh, zero um, fees for the brokerage part of the businesses and act like banks that are really strong. So I want to see the XLF start to trade over the next uh, maybe two months into the 3031 area to show some independence. I was talking about to someone the other day who uh, uh, has a, a bond uh, trading firm, and uh, he was saying, yeah, I just don't see the, with the PEs and all that. I don't see the banks doing anything. They're just kind of stuck. So I said to him, aren't you kind of impressed that they've held this well? He said, yes, but 
I don't see them leading the market at all. So I want that whole the whole group of people that look at banks as um, a relationship, maybe to interest rates and a relationship to the to the fees. Sure. Become fairly independent and and act as banks that have actually well. We know that they charge fees for everything. They've they've turned the airline a la carte menu. Um, where you charge, they charge for luggage and everything. Well, the banks have been doing the same thing with with fees in, in other areas. Yes. So I want to see the banks start to do well. I want to see them as a part of the market area that is showing economic strength. That's all. And what's interesting, Basil, is I was looking at this morning, big week of earnings for all of them next week. I'm not sure if you're aware. We got J.P. Morgan. Goldman, Citi, and Wells Fargo all on Tuesday, and then Bank of America Wednesday, and Morgan Stanley on Thursday. So you got you got all of them almost in there next week, and you'll get at least where we've been the last three months, right, with with the rates, and we've had some volatility there, yeah. and and um, possibly where we'll be in the future with some forecasts as well. But most most importantly, I think if you look at, for instance, Goldman Sachs, it's a different business to the, to the way it used to be years ago. They don't do as many IPOs, I think. They used to be so, so much more involved in that area. But I suspect that they will be back. I've always said that if Goldman starts to trade, in the, it's at 205 right now. If you can see Goldman at any point this year trading the 227 or higher, I think that's going to be a big help. That's going to be a sign to say, hey, now we're back in business. So um, that's not that far away. It's just 10 no, 11%. No, and even but on I the, think if it can do it. Yeah, I was just going to say, even on the XLF, not that far away if you, if you start to get some movement on the underlyings, um, you know, meaning the. Especially as, especially as they survived up until now. With the rates going so low, yeah, um, and 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 the announcement of the fees fees in, in many of the brokerage houses going to zero percent, yes, I think um, I think they're holding very well. I, I agree. I mean, we you know, and I just have the yield up here of the ten-year basil, kind of you know the inverse chart of what you've been looking at on the price of those bonds, um, and just remarkable run, man. Since the beginning of August, we were at two point one almost, two point zero eight. Call it what you like, two point zero six. We trade from two point zero eight. Month of August, quite a move to 1.4. I think it was 1.44, maybe the low. Hey, what about what about 3.24 in October of 2018? Yeah, I know. You try it's and put year. things in context, exactly and you just have to keep going back. You put it six months, you put it to a year, you put it for a full year, and man, oh, man, there you are exactly. November, and we're not even in our, uh, November yet, folks, of 2019. You're sitting at 3.2 down to 1.4 and change back up to the 1.9 and now we're sitting at 1.74 kind of right in the middle of where we've been so it'll be interesting to see if basil like you have it on your tlt if we get kind of like that retracement of back up to that two percent number which will kind of correlate what you're talking so about there what i was discussing with this person is that um i say don't you think that it's the international pressure to sell bonds and, and really a pressure to get to uh, the lowest rate to be the most des desirable uh, bonds that are sold, that is putting pressure on the Fed. Because if you look at the uh, earn if you look at both earnings um, and probably the other factors in the market, economic factors, things are still pretty darn good, especially jobs. And that says to me that under other conditions, over the decades and decades that some of us have been looking at markets, usually when you when you have good economic activity, there is a demand for loans. And those demand for loans means that banks have an opportunity to raise the rates. Yes. So the normal thing here would be, I would have thought over the, the normal thing over the last three, four years would be just an incremental quarter point move up in rates. But the pressure, external pressure is really the issue. So the, I, I see the Fed is in a bind because on the one hand, they know what they should be doing. And that is over the last couple of years, not lowering rates, but kind of moving with demand. But that international pressure is just much greater. We, we know that in the bond market, the amount of volume is surpasses yes. you know, just anything in the stock trillions market. Trillions upon trillions, exactly. Yes. Well, Basil, we got a call. Let's go to our man Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, good morning. Yeah, first one's going to be TUFN. It blew through its volume. Where it's going now? Does it extend on a Fibonacci downwards? And the next one, check out Tilray, if you don't mind. 
Well, let's take a look at that TUFN to start things off. Uh, and I'm yeah, going to let Basil. Is so this a software technology company, Victor? Yeah, it's an Israeli company. Okay, so it's up about 2% today or 32 cents, the 52 week range. Um, though this popping up, are we, uh, are we right near that range as I pull this up? Uh, it blew so, too low to so, get on the yeah. chair. So, I'm so what, Victor. What is it the way down now? Well, you know, Victor, this has been in a rectangle formation between the low of about 1560 and a high of 18.30. So if I can That's talk quite, to you about the rectangle formation, maybe we can get some. That's quite some, a chart. All right, we're going to take a 30, uh, three minute break. We'll be right back, folks. We're going to look at TUFN. We'll look at Tilray as well with Victor. We'll be right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets in positive territory, to say the least. And we're on the line with Victor from Prems, New Jersey. And we're talking about TUFN. So, Basil, as you were saying, kind of that consolidation zone after quite a pullback, though, from 32 bucks within the last year. 
Well, you do have to consider that it's an IPO, and it comes out uh, back in, was that May? I think it was April. Oh, April, there it is. It comes out at 18.05, drops, that, that is the low, 24.89 that first month. Then it screams up to the 31.04 level. Unfortunately, then drops much below the opening price, and it goes down to 15.15. .15. So, Victor, I don't know if you can see my charts, but you, you've got your chart in front of you. If you look at the way that it came down, the daily chart, it made an H pattern. You know, I often talk about the lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m. It can become like a worm that it keeps doing these h's. Most importantly, it mustn't take out the left side low and hold under that for two out of three bars. So I'm going to suggest to you, if this was a three or $4 stock, it would be easy. I'd just say, you know what, Victor? I think that even if it goes underneath, it's got a, a trading range that says it could go and test the 16 to, well, to the middle part of the range again. But at $15, that's that's big bucks. That's I, 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 I wouldn't have the same attitude. I was going to say you could treat it as an option. I wouldn't do that at a $15 stock. But what I am going to say to you, risk reward with everything that's going on today to only be up 31 cents and taking out, having a good day three days ago and then just taking out yesterday and going almost to the low that was made back at uh, on the 16th at 15.15, I'm going to suggest to you, if you want, you could just nibble at the stock. I just would not get carried away, and I wouldn't be excessive. I'd rather be buying strength than weakness. Um, I don't like the fact that it's made, made this pattern and just keeps staying in the rectangle formation. But if you think of it, wait a minute, every time it's gone to the bottom of the 15.7080 area, the bottom of the rectangle, the base, it's run up to the top. If that's what you're thinking, that this could be a trade rather than a position play for months, but just a trade to run up to the top, this is the place to get in. 1586, I would not have a big stop. I'd probably have a 50 cent stop on the thing because if it, if it goes lower than about 1570, 1560, I start to get a little worried. But that's the way I would deal with it um, because it's showing no sustained strength in the sense that it wants to break to the upside. The MACDs run up, the price hasn't run up. The stochastics holding nicely, the price hasn't been benefiting. So that's the way I would look at that one. And I would actually add to it if it's successful, if you start here and it can cross the 14 period moving average or the nine period and go to 16.50, you can even add a little bit to try to get to 18. And that one I'd lighten up as it was going higher. But when you look at Tilray, it's oh, almost boy. the same thing. And that's broken. This is Tilray Medical Cannabis. And I drew this and I showed this a long time ago. It also was an IPO. This was back in, let me see if I can get the date right here. Yeah, back in July of 2018, had a low of 20.10, screams up to 300, exact round number high, TLRY is the symbol. And then it has a little problem. And I drew this in. I said, this looks like what I wrote. I typed in here. Wonderful example of the Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower or the A pattern, meaning it goes straight up and then straight down. And it's taking out the left side low. I'd be very careful. Probably risk reward right here, 21.26, if it takes out yesterday's low of 20.59. Um, but both of these are. Um, I'd call them bottom fishing, except that the other one has shown a base that you can identify very clearly. This one is a little different in that it just keeps making lower lows and lower highs. So this is right now the first opportunity uh, that I'd say to you, you've got risk reward at 21.30, because if it closes under the law of yesterday, 20.59, that's a 70 cents or so risk. That's one way to do it. But yeah. Uh, I don't see anything technically yet to say that it's made a big turn. It can have a bounce, but a real turn, it's going to take the whole group, and the whole group seems to have the same kind of chart pattern, Tilray Inc. And just to add, I would be a little bit skeptical of Tilray, Victor, only because it's still worth a $2 billion valuation right now, which is remarkable considering that it's wow, at, I know, $20. I was trying to do the math. I mean, that means that it was worth somewhere around almost $30 billion probably when it was trading up at $300, which is remarkable. But I went into just the ownership in terms of the position. 
And you have still privateer holdings, which is, I believe that's Peter Thiel in there as well when this is talked about. I mean, and this thing got written about so many times when it was up at that 300. But they have 86% of the outstanding shares. Um, I would oh. just be skeptical of a company that's not really public in the nature of so many of the shares held by one company. Um, but they, you know, the other side of that is, I think some of the news today had to do with that they're talking about they have a joint venture with AB, Anheuser-Busch, and that they may commercialize CBD-infused beverages in Canada when legal. Um, but man, I would just be careful when you already have a $2 billion valuation. And I put it on a chart myself, and it's just remarkable when you look at that run. And of course, it was talked about because the valuations were just out of whack, with even, even with optimism in the cannabis sector, which I would have. But man, oh man, we're right back to where we were before the hysteria began and who says that that's where it might stop when you still have $2 billion of market cap value that's out there to be lost or it could be weakened a bit. And every single person at yesterday's close who has bought the stock from, its, from after its IPO is in a losing position. Every single person, except for those who were in on the uh, initial public offering, yeah, um, I, I'd say the, the people that want to get out are probably more numerous than the ones who want to get in. So that does put a cap at about 28 to 32. Uh, that's a nice percentage gain. I'm just saying that that it's just remarkable. They should do a case study about how this thing made it up to 300 bucks, man, because it was still, even if you take that tail off of things, it was still up at 150. This is a weekly I have here. You're talking about, you know, one, two, three, four, five, let alone if you're counting one, it was sitting at a hundred and we're now at $20. And it's been a slide the whole way. Sorry, All right, Victor. Victor. Well, hopefully he got uh, he got yeah, some I'm good sure intel about yeah. his two bottom feeders that he's picking up there. We'll see what happens. All right, jumping around, Basil. Can we take a look at oil? Maybe I was uh, yeah, I pulled it up this morning when I saw the headline that. Uh, let me just zoom it down a little bit. That's on a weekly, just so we can see some of the action. Let's put it on a 15 minute. And uh, you saw quite an acceleration overnight. The news that the Iranian tanker had had two missiles, I believe it was, um, that it hit it a half hour apart. The real fear there, whether there might be an escalation between Saudi Arabia and Iran over the recent attack on the Saudi field. But pretty muted action, Basil. $54. Of course, we were at 51.38. That kind of correlates to the lows in the market. Just to keep things in perspective, you have the S&Ps up about 100 points from where that oil was trading at. So you're getting a lot of reaction to maybe some tension um, easing to do with the trade war. But nonetheless, $54 on the spot right now as we come in. And I hear the music. And let me see what you got. We're looking at Basil's CL chart on a 10 minutes, 54.04. Folks, stay Thanks. tuned. Basil and I are going to be back in three minutes. We'll talk about some of this crude oil market when we return. Stay tuned. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. we got markets in positive territory. Oil trading higher as well. We have crude trading $54.09. And Basil, I see a peak D up there. I got a peak B. And look at that peak E on a monthly. So if you look at the crude oil, for months, we, 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 we've talked about the range that it's been in, that it might have spiked at the last uh, Iranian issue was six, uh, on the 16th of September, went to 63.14, and then just collapsed, went to 50.99 uh, on the continuous contract. 50.23 was the August low. Now, what's really important is I think this is telling us quite clearly and kind of confirming what we had thought back in uh, September that there, I wouldn't say there's a glut of oil on the market, but there is enough oil on the market um, to ameliorate the issue. And I, that's what you look, if I'm looking at this chart, I'm saying, gee, I wouldn't have been able to tell that there was anything going on other than just little pops in the market. In fact, it's even weaker than just the regular old rallies that you saw in August and early September. So it's, there's no question that the, the concept of oil as the premier energy source has changed over the last 10 years. Sure. You've got battery, you've got um, hydro, you've, got, you've just got so many other alternatives. Yes. Solar is, I mean, if you look at some of the solar stocks, they've been doing very nicely. So I think that's part of the issue. And, and, and it's a good sign that we, we are able to um, have these little skirmishes, so far they're little skirmishes because it's yeah. just the oil tanker itself, and the reflection of what the relationship is to the con to the investors' concerns, and the reality is saying um, an issue to worry about. Oops, okay, everything's fine. Yeah. And the speed with which it happened is really important because you know that in other periods, anything closer. If I think back to 1987, the morning of the October the 19th, I can go back so many times. There was not only was the market highly vulnerable, but you got some some skirmish uh, with the Israelis <coughs> and, and in the Middle East. Uh, I remember that was the Suez Canal back in uh, October the nineteenth, nineteen eighty seven. There's always something, yes. And oil just it stays high, it goes higher, and it stays for quite a while until the issue itself is re resolved. So I think this is just telling us more about the situation in terms of the availability of alternative uh, means 
So oil isn't quite as important as it used to be, at least that's the way it's looking right now. I agree. I mean, if you, you should be waking up to, to the price pulling back as it seems like the political risk, um, the geopolitical risk has, has pretty much, uh, I'd say it's ramped up. You know, you have the Saudi oil fields getting attacked. You have an Iranian tanker getting attacked to and you have speed. oil prices below where they were trading at before both of those events took place, which, um, at, and we have we a lot of production. Looking, we are looking at this, the, the increase in time because you went from the 16th of um, went from the 16th of September yes. to the 11th of a, a less than a month later, yes. and now you've got something else. Now I just seen that there was an explosion. I didn't realize that there was actually an attack, so that should have made it even worse. The yeah, and I think there, there, I think that that same risk was already factored in was how i was trying to rationalize that basil is and the market was aware that you could see some small escalations potentially um obviously that's not going to have a huge supply impact on the actual market if anything it would just ramp up the fears and i think maybe those fears they should already be in the market you know that should not be a wake-up call after what happened to the saudi oil field that an iranian right. Um, ship could be attacked as some type of small retaliation potentially. But a physical, a physical presence could change that. In other words, if troops, oh, if you start yes. talking about troops, that's, no, that's something I agree. I agree. Different. And then, you know, yes. on the supply side of things, uh, the Middle East used to be everything when it came to oil, and that's not the case anymore. And it's not the case that we even need oil, like you said, anymore. But American oil, huge numbers that we produce as well in terms of energy on our own on our own level. So the impact may be not as tough. You know, when, when, uh, I know, I know there's a lot of criticism, criticism of President Trump, but we have to face it that um, this independence that America has, has formed through the use of uh, the development of our oils in various ways, that's really a huge positive. I think that's yeah. really part of what's happened. That's part of the economic uh, boom that we've been in. Our economy runs on energy and we needed it for a long time dramatically from the Middle East almost entirely. And I would say it's a good thing that that is no longer the case for sure. And if you think of America's independence, that is also very important because um, to be self-sufficient, yes, there are negatives, but there are also some huge positives involved. So can we jump to gold, Basil? Quite a day. Gold really trading inverse with the market as this has been bouncing around, but we've seen gold kind of continue to slide even when we're on the air. You started off 10 o'clock. We were at 1487 as we saw kind of the market pop right at 10 o'clock. You saw gold pulling from 1487 to 1400. I know you gave a great take at the beginning of the show kind of talking about gold, the dollar, um, and where we were. But what kind of critical level? Are you looking at this 14, that kind of C point on the daily, Basil? Is that, would that be your low that you're really looking towards? As at 1465 of the continuous contract. Let me just see if it's been modified because these numbers change because it's a continuous contract. Yep, 1465. But what I wanted to actually, that, that was the thought that I was going to continue with when we're talking about crude oil. And when I said, you know, some kind of configuration where you've got troops, that, that's something different. And I think gold is telling us that this is not a big issue at this particular point because you would see gold up 20, not down 20, if that was the case. Sure, definitely, definitely. So this is telling you, if you look at, just purely technically, if we're looking at this, I'll, I'll show you something very interesting. Look at the monthly chart. We were once uh, back in September of 2011 in gold. Uh, I, I don't have to tell you that was at, uh, an incredible high. Amazing it's a numbers. Smoothed out, yeah, it's a smoothed out uh, um, number. So it's at 2054. Excuse it could have been something different because it's a continuous contract. But it went from the high of September to the low of that little tiny doji candle in December of 2015 at 1,143. So when you go from um 205 to one so it's from 20 to 14 that's a big difference the, yeah the, the the percentage is really big Mammoth, and then yeah. you rally but you're you're rallying you, you don't do all that much because you go to the 
July high of 2016 at 14.70. Then you come back and you make, you test a, kind of a low in the 11.70. It was at 11.70. Yeah, no, it's a 12, sorry, 12.07 level. You test it again in July of July, August of 2018. And then it breaks out. Now, this is very interesting because, Tommy, this is a, have a look at this. This is a monthly chart. Yes. You'll see a little picture here of a lowercase h that went to a lowercase m. Remember, that's the pattern that we were looking at when Victor called. Him. We were looking at the yep. Israeli stock that kept on going with an H pattern. And then there was another little H, and then it broke out. But wait a minute. Look what happens if you go to the GDX. The GDX has a slightly different pattern. Yeah. And um, that's what I'm looking at. The GDX now is stalled, and those are the gold stocks. So there's a difference between gold right now and the gold stocks. They are consolidating a little deeper than gold itself. I wonder how that plays in, whether the dollar, whether interest rates, and where you're going to park your money. Stay tuned, folks. Basil and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. Markets in positive territory. We get the Dow up almost 400 points. Check out the opening call, folks. Right under newsletters, Basil's great service. He usually puts out updates Saturdays and Sundays sometimes for subscribers. But nonetheless, either way, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
And Basil, you're always out there putting out good content for your subscribers. I'm sure they appreciate it, and I encourage you all to check it out as well. Always enjoy Basil filling in for the program for Tom. And you also get access to at least five different archived webinars that all subscribers gain access to, the most recent one just in August. And uh, I know Basil, we're always looking forward to the next one, so we'll look forward to that as well. And I saw you going over fast enough, one of the Tigers in the Den, Basil. Could we take a quick look at that? Because I was curious myself. I saw your commentary. Yeah, you know, Fastenal, so it's, there are a couple of companies, TMO, Thermodynamics, a couple of companies that I've followed for years and hardly ever get into, and I always regret never got into because they just, they, they are masters at, sure. uh, you know, their business. So Fastenal's at an all-time high, just gapped up, must have had earnings or something. It's up 4.85 at 35.89. Really a great-looking chart. Yeah, I could do some banking and filling, but I like it because it's part of the industry. Uh, it's just it's a really good sign if I put it together with Syntas, which is uniforms and overalls, which had a, a quite a bit of a dip from 270 one, yeah. to 244. But now it's right back. It's at 270. It's actually made a new all-time high. This is saying that there are parts of the, 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 um, the country that might have had certain slowdowns. But these two stocks holding like this, is a, I think that's a good sign. It's a great sign for the economy. I agree. Yeah. I've, I know you've followed that one for a while, and that is a powerful monthly chart for a company delivering uniforms when it speaks yeah. to the economy. Basil, as I said, I always appreciate you filling in, man. Of course, we look forward to the Tiger Technician's Hour at noon today. Always enjoy it. Thank you, Tommy. You as well. Folks, stay tuned. Fast Market coming up next. Basil back at noon. We got Dave White live at 2 o'clock and Larry filling in live at 3. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.